As we come back into the video, I need to do something that I should have done in the end of the last video, which is to save this. Whenever you're working on complex textures or you're putting in time on a project, it helps to save as you go. So once again, right now this is a TGA because of the uh, UV snapshot that was created, but I'm going to go File, Save As, and in the project under PSD, I am going to save this as Barrel 1. I'll just do barrel one for now and then save it as the Photoshop file. So save that. And that way it will save with the layers. So if something happens, the computer crashes or whatever else, I've got this as a backup. So right now I'm going to move on and I am going to create these steel bands. So as I look here, I can see that I have three at the top, three at the bottom. And I know the center line of my barrels right here. The top band I want to have run over just a touch on the top of this section so that it gives that illusion of the band having some of the, the depth on the top that I want. Um, I'm actually going to increase the uh, size of that band just a little bit more so it's a little bit thicker. I will shift select to create this next thinner band. And then a little further down I'm going to create a, another band about right here. On these, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a new layer. I'm going to go Edit, Fill. Now, there are a lot of colors in this band, but some of them are the color of the band and others are the reflection. Um, and so when you're working with materials that are specular or reflective, it's important to think about what that base color might be. So uh, as you progress in the craft and you start learning about developing specular maps and things like that, um, then that'll be an additional pass. But for right now, because I'm not using anything specular, I'm just going to be painting it in. I'm just going to figure out like kind of a base color that I can choose from, which I could grab from here, but really that's just reflected color from someplace else. I'm actually just going to go for a darker purple um, or a gray or something that I can then build from. And so with that created, I'm then going to control J, lower this down, because I want the bands to be the same distance from the top and the bottom. I'll go edit, transform, rotate 180. And now I can bring this down. And if I want to get things to line straight up and down, if I hold down the shift key, then it will go in a single direction. So let me actually step back. And now while holding the shift key, I will click and drag. And then if I need to nudge it, I can use the arrow keys to adjust everything on this layer just a little bit so that now it's lined up the same on the top and the bottom. <coughs> I'm going to take both of these layers and I will right click and I will merge those layers. So now those are all under a single layer. So if I do need to make changes, so for example, let's say I do want this to be a little bit more of the green that's on here and have some highlights, I can select this layer, control select so that I've got it isolated to that. And then I can come in and start painting some of those other colors instead of that purple that's there. So I can actually grab this darker green if I choose to. Increase that opacity a little bit. Get it the same on either side so that it gets that nice transition over. I can get this whiter color. Oops, Control Alt Z. Sorry, I was pushing the wrong thing. Uh, lower that opacity down. I can start building up this highlight that's going through the barrel. And I can continue to play with it as much as I want to. So for example, I, I can see like striations and bands here. 
um, that part of that's from the process of it running through the, the machine that splays it um, and allows it to get the shape it needs. But I could just continue to play with this and work on it as needed until I'm happy with what I get. For right now, I'm going to call that good, though. If I want to add additional details, I could also uh, add in, for example, these little rivets here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more for that. And I'll make its own layer. These all look roughly the same. So if I really want to, I could say, OK, this band uh, goes to right here. Let me step back. right there. I'm going to select inverse so that I'm not painting there in the center. I'm going to grab this but then make sure it's a darker color. Probably not all the way to black but a really dark green. Uh, tighten this up just a little bit. Increase that opacity. That's going out too far, so I'll shrink this down to, let's say, a 3. Paint up just around the outside of this. And there are a lot of other ways I could approach this as well, but this is one way. So I will do that there. I'm also going to, uh, down here, create a new layer. And with this layer 6 as the guide, very quickly, to the layer 8, I'm going to just, actually I'll step back, step forward again, uh, just get that quick mark. So I don't need it really over the top, I just want to indicate where those bands are folding over each other. And if I really want to I could also lower that opacity down though get just a little highlight on one side to give that illusion that there's that transition. So it doesn't need to be a lot, but it's getting something. For this layer 7, I can control J to duplicate that, and I'll bring this down. And right now, those are too big, obviously. So I'm going to step back and I am going to uh, take that layer 7, I'm going to trash that. I'm going to try doing this again, but smaller. I'll actually start with the, the band here, and I'm noticing this band's not as thick as I need it to be. But for right now, because I'm already this far with this tutorial, I'll just go with it. But I'm going to go for something much smaller. So what I will do is I will come in I will zoom in a little bit further. And since I know that this is kind of the base one that I'm, I'm working with, I'll start with this. And as I can see, it's getting really, really small with the details. So I'm actually going to shrink this down to a 1. Grab this darker color. And I will just paint in these two. rivets by hand. And if I want to get a little bit of a highlight in there, I can do that as well. All right, so now I can take that, control J. Drag that up into place, control J, drag that down to here, control J, and I'm holding shift so that it goes directly up and down. Oh. Bring that into place, control J. Bring that down into place, control J, and bring that down into place there. I can also create this right here. So I will create a new layer for that. 
Zoom in just a touch. And from here, I want to put the, the plug just right here. And I will hold down the Alt key and the Shift key, so I'm dragging straight out from the center where I first touched down, right on the middle of the line. Um, and I actually may want to make this a little bit bigger, so it's going through a couple of boards. Actually, I'll make it slightly smaller. So once again, I'll start and then hit Shift and uh, Alt so that it's dragging out and equally from the center. So do that. Do Edit Fill. Get that a color. Um, and I'll give it that, that lighter color. That's I'll grab this, but then go to a, an even lighter color there. And then I will select Inverse. So now I'm not going to paint in that section, but I can use that as a way of building up some of the uh, coloration around it to give it just a little bit of shading. A little more than I wanted, so I'm lowering the opacity and just touching the edges. And I may want it a little cleaner than that. In that case, I can come back and erase and do some other things. But as you can see, there's a lot that you can do just by continuing to work at things, work in layers, uh, build up shapes and forms, and start thinking things through in ways that make sense. What is your base color? How do you add to it? How do you build it up from there? All right. Uh, up here at the top, in addition to can, if I had taken the time in this tutorial, um, but if I was doing this for real, I would come back and I would continue to work up the board so that all of them have the, the right amount of texturing similar to these two boards that I did. Uh, but then I can come in and add in additional layers to add uh, some shaping, some shadowing. So for example, if I come here, I'm going to deselect everything to the top and bottom. Right here on the inside, I know that this is where the barrel is folding over to the inside. So I can add a little bit of shading. So I'm tapping down and then holding shift so that it's even across the form. I'll do the same thing down here. On these, I'm going to paint in from this outside edge to give it just a little bit of that shading. So th this creates that feeling of occlusion uh, where it goes into the edges. And I'm just slowly adding in a little bit more. And the nice part about doing this on a layer by itself is that this layer can then be adjusted later on. So this layer can either be made invisible, I can lower the opacity, I can make other effects and adjustments as needed. Now once again, for a, an actual texture, I would take this much further. But this gives you an idea of how things can be built. Uh, to wrap up this portion, I want to show you how it's then applied. So once more, I'm going to File, Save. So I'm saving that Photoshop file. I then go File, Save As. And under the Source Images, I will make sure this is saved as a Targa. And for my naming convention, I'll call it Barrel 1 Text. And select Save. I want to make sure this is saved as a 24-bit Targa so that it doesn't have any alpha channels or anything else. So 24-bit, hit OK. If I come back here to the Barrel in Maya, I can now apply it. So over here under the Barrel 1 mat, select this checker box next to Color, select File, select this folder, and I will select Barrel 1 Text. And when I open it, you can see that that texture is now applied. As I spoke about in the previous videos uh, in Module 7, I believe, um, and you see I've got a little bit of stuff there that I need to clean up. I'm making a decision with this low resolution model because I expect the barrel to be seen maybe about this distance. And so I can get away with a little distortion. If I needed it to be closer up, I could increase the resolution of the texture as well as adding in additional geometry to clear up some of these distortions that are being created. I'm willing to sacrifice uh, and have some of these distortions in the wood right here because it allows me currently to be have an easier time of painting the boards.
And so once again, this is a decision making process. If this is going to be closer up, I would need to add in additional geometry. So for example, doing something like this, you see how that's straightened up that texture a little bit more. I'm actually going to step back until that's undone. Um, but I could make other decisions that would allow me to achieve my goals. Also, because of the way the texture works, you can see that this wood grain is coming up. There's that little bit of the metal band that comes over the top and the wood grain continues on and through and down. And there's that little bit of shading right now here on the inside. And I could push it, I could do a lot more. But this hopefully will give you an idea of the way that you can now take the tools that you've been playing with and been learning about and you can apply them to any type of model. So I would encourage you to go back to some of the models you've done previously and now complete them. Uh, create UV maps for them and go through the texturing process. In fact, go and look up new things that you can try playing with. Go through the entire process. You now have the base tools to be able to get a complete model. Uh, take something, model it, UV map it, and apply a texture to it. The final thing I wanted to talk about with this um, was looking at some of these other barrels. So I'm going to hide these two right now. There are some additional details that can be put on. You can see there's uh, stuff that's leaked out of here. There's staining. There's like, I think that's paper or chalk or something stuck on there. Something written on right here. Um, these barrels that have been repeatedly opened and closed and have had uh, wine spill out, there's this splatter that's occurring here. So on top of that clean, pristine barrel with the, the boards that are going up and down, you can actually come back and yeah, let me grab this and you could paint on that red splattering that's coming from the hole and going on to the steel bands running down the sides and you can add more details you can add in scratches you can add in dents you can add in you know uh, dark marks and burns and all sorts of information you can add in uh, rusting onto the steel bands there's a lot that you can do with it now it just comes down to practice and time so once again Try exploring your own models, uh, go through the entire process, and then make sure you get good references. Have something you can look at and analyze, and then try and recreate it on your own. Uh, that's it for this module. I will see you next time.